All right, so common book binding. We are mostly talking about saddle stitched books. Um, that's what I'm gonna be doing a, a dummy uh, or a demo dummy, dummy demo uh, for. Um, but, you know, oftentimes you'll see, you'll see saddle stitched or, you know, um, uh, pamphlet bound books, right? And so that's, that's, that's this, where there's like staples on the side and you open it up and there's again multiples of four pages. Now because of um, the way that this book is like you know stapled together, um, there is a kind of like a max limit of pages that you can put into it before it starts getting like it won't close right because you're putting all of these pages together and just stapling them, they're all kind of, all of the paper is sitting on top of each other. And so it'll lay less and less flat, the thicker and thicker it becomes. And that's dependent upon your page count. I've found that um, saddle stitch can work between eight to like 50-ish pages, but that also depends on how thick your paper is, right? And so you want your book to sit pretty flat and that's that's kind of nice. If it he starts opening it up and it's too it's too V shaped, then you might want to consider going to perfect binding. Perfect binding looks like this, right? And so it has that flat edge, and that's because the pages are all glued. So that's um, glue, and then this is like a casing, a single page that goes around as the cover that cases that glue to all of these interior pages, all right? So it, it reads similarly, but that's usually for books that are, again, are a little bit longer. Um, and so perfect binding, um, definitely think about perfect binding if you have more than like 50 pages going on. And, and then, you know, um, you might wanna consider that. Uh, there are perfect binder, um, machines at MICA that you can use in the future um, or you can send it out to another printer who is able to perfect bind it for you. Um, perfect binding can be anything from like you know 50-ish pages. This one I think is about a hundred and boop boop boop. It's not listed. I think that this one's around like 120 pages is what it looks like. Um, or it can be like mad thick. So this is on a sunbeam by Tilly Walden. This one was Kelsey wrote in crimes. And then this one was, um, Emmanuel Guerrero and, uh, he has really cute characters, right? So a perfect bound book can also be massive, right? It can be huge. Um, but there are also other routes to go, right? And um, other really large books, um, if they have like a hard cover, they're case bound. That's when it looks like this. So this is a case binding. Beautiful. Pretending is lying by Dominique Goblet. Beautiful. Um, and then there's things like um, spiral bound books. This one's a really interesting format. I think it's really cool. This is by Rose Wong. It's called The Garden. All right. So Spiral binding, again, is something that you can consider and look around to see like where you can get a spiral binding uh, machine and the tools to do that. And then there's things like stab stitching, Japanese stab stitching. And it looks like this. This is by Sunmi. It's called Typewriter Drawings. It's made with, um, this is really beautiful. It's, it's like made on this uh, newsprint almost quality paper. And this is another one where um, you just need multiples of two because um, all of the pages are stacked as opposed to folded. All right, so this is Japanese stab stitching. It's very pretty. Um, and then there's even other ways to make books. Um, this one is by Hagen Park and um, this was produced by Perfectly Acceptable. And it's a book that has, so these are two, this is really interesting. These are two pamphlet bound, like um, saddle stitched books on either side that then open up and, and are uh, have a really big cover that cases both of them, right? So I mean like even though, you know, um, this one's bananas and really cool, uh, it still has like the basics of, right, um, the stab stitching or pamphlet binding um, booklet. So those basics will help you to be creative and make things that you wouldn't expect as well. 
Um, and then this one's a really funny one. I just thought I'd, I'd show it. So this one is um, perfect bound, but it's a little man. Look at that. It's called Mr. Book. I for actually forgot who I got this from. And these are all little faces. All right. And then there's like a, a little, little man pasted into the back. So even though this part is very simple, this makes it really clever. Um, so yeah, you can be creative even if there are like a, cu a couple of basic ways to bind your book. Um, once you figure out how to do that, you can start to play around with the form and see, see how that goes. Um, so tools. These are the tools that you kind of need to, to find a book and I will show you some more too as, as we speak over at my other desk. Um, you need paper, obviously. Um, a bone folder is usually a good thing to have. Um, a straight edge or ruler, really important. Um, an awl, and so an awl is what you use to basically stab into the page if you're going to be sewing it. Um, a binding needle and thread. So you can use book binding thread that has like a little bit of wax on it. That's really great. Or you can use embroidery thread. I've used that plenty. Um, a saddle stapler or a long arm stapler. I have both and I'll show you guys the differences between the two. And then the digital tools that you'll need. Um, so a lot of people use Adobe InDesign to create their booklets. Um, some people use Adobe Photoshop. Uh, there are plenty of ways to make like a, a PDF that you can then print multiple times. It's up to you and what your comfort level is. And I think that once we produce these dummy books and once you see what imposition really is, you'll figure out what tools work best for you and what makes sense for you. But again, it's really important to do it physically at least one time so that you can further understand like the tools that you'll need next, right? Um, an analog master copy. So sometimes people will just cut their comics out, paste them into um, a dummy book that hasn't been bound so that they know, you know, what side pages everything are on and then just use like a copier or a risograph. Um, totally an option and a double-sided printer. So something that um, is able to print double-sided or you can feed the pages um, appropriately like one at a time, uh, but that's kind of bananas. So um, a double-sided printer is, is really important to have access to in order to print these comics. All right, so a note about double-sided printing. So this is a dialog box from my Mac. I'm not sure how it looks on a PC, but I would assume there is a similarity. Um, all printers are different, so you have to be sure to test out the one that you're using before committing to making multiple books. I like to have control over the printer. If you have somebody else printing for you, just make sure that you are mm, present for like the first time that they print and talk to them about it and make sure that you guys are both on the same page. Um, in the print dialog box, when it says, says you know, print, you, you go to printer or print settings, one of those buttons at the bottom to get more options, right? And then you get this dialog box that comes up and you have to press show details and then it becomes more complex and it's great because you can choose short edge binding. Now, what does that mean? Short edge binding is really important because if you're printing out your comic, right, it's being printed probably landscape like this, right? And so um, if you choose short edge binding, that means that when the printer flips the paper to print double-sided, it'll flip on the short edge of the page whoop, and print basically so that both sides are right side up. Now, if you choose long edge binding for the printing, then it'll all go through and then when it needs to flip to go to um, the next page, the double-sided, it'll choose the long edge to flip it and go whoop. And then it'll print upside down and that's just the worst. So you need to make sure to go over to um, this dialog box. You have to choose layout and then down here on two sided, there's short edge and long edge binding. Always choose short edge, short edge, unless you're doing something wonky. But if you're, print, if you're printing landscape and folding your book like this, the way that, you know, is like the basic straightforward way to do it, 
shortage. All right, so we're gonna do a quick demo and I'm just gonna make a dummy book. It's gonna be really short and quick and you are going to be able to see um, you know, how to go about it and then maybe understand imposition a little bit more. And from that demo, um, yeah, you'll have the tools that basically you need in order to create your comics. Um, when it comes to InDesign and Photoshop, um, those are questions that you can ask me over email. This is for my students not so much for like the general public. <laughs> um, and then there's also lots of other uh, opportunities to find tutorials about InDesign and putting together booklets digitally. But this is more about like the physical making and binding of the books, okay? So let's go over there and fold and staple and stitch a few things, okay? Cool, bye.